Hey folks, it's Chad here with Airstream in Greensboro and today we are going to do a full walk around of the all new 2024 Airstream Tradewind 25 front bed twin bed model. That is a mouthful of things to say. Now there's a option for the queen bed. You also have the twin bed option. There's currently only one floor plan, which is the 25 foot. We're going to jump into that full walk around now. All right, folks, we're going to start. Actually, we'll start on the inside because that's what, what you really want to see. It's the trade winds, right? The inside. And then we'll do the outside. Now, on the camera today, I've got my wife, Laura. You saw her in the first video we did. Now, once this video is posted after a little bit, probably a week or so, I'm going to post a third video where I really go into in-depth on the solar system, the battery system, and the inverter on the trade winds. It's a lot to talk about. I am going to talk about it today, but I'm not going to go into depth today. Watch out for that next video. Make sure you subscribe, hit that bell icon. Now going inside of the trade winds, the first thing that should stick out to you is that this is not the traditional door handle that we have seen from Airstream for who knows how long, way too long is what we'll say. But it's a whole new mechanism. It's a whole new door handle. It's also going to have a new locking mechanism on the inside. This is hopefully, hopefully what this means is we're not going to lock ourselves out of our Airstreams anymore. So you're going to have that lock there, which will do the door handle. And then you're going to have this one, which should be the little um, deadbolt. Now, something to know, if you don't already know this, some of you will probably know um, firsthand. But if you shut this door with this sticking out, it will break this and you will replace all of this not just the deadbolt so make sure when you go to shut the door that that is unlocked but i'm really excited about this hopefully they will bring this to all of the airstreams uh going forward but right now it's only in the trade wind currently now with 2024 we did see the new latching system for the screen door which i really like i haven't been able to figure out whether or not uh, we're going to be able to do it like a retrofit on our, you know, the current system that's not near as good. This one works fantastic. You can do it with one hand. Uh, it just works. It works great. I mean, that's, that's what I got to say there. Uh, now, as far as the door goes, as you know, hopefully, if you don't know this, I'll tell you, it takes Airstream roughly eight hours to build this door and the screen. Now, they build these together. So this is going to be bent to fit with that door and just shut with that door. That means that you want to shut these two things together. You don't want to ever have the screen door shut and then shut the door into the screen. That can cause something to happen. I don't know what, what happens, but that's what they tell us. Um, you're going to see six welds on each side for the aluminum extruded screen. So this is hand built at Airstream. Um, as you can see there, handcrafted by Airstream, Airstream, Airstream right there. One of the other things I like to point out pretty much in every video I make is these welds that that uh, kind of makes out the frame of the door. Now, the reason I point it out is it's there's such a consistency to uh, these welds. Every single Airstream I look at, every sing single Airstream I video, when I look at those welds, they look pretty much like that. Now, I'm pretty sure they hand weld those. Maybe they do a machine, but I think they help hand weld those. And that's just, it shows to me the quality of an airstream so you're gonna have all aluminum you have a really nice um heavy duty cast aluminum hinges for the door there's two of those so they they call this the vault door of the rv industry because it sounds like a vault when you close it but i just love that sound because it sounds like sounds like quality <laughs> um and then something else that's going to be different with the I guess the new handle is this new, whatever that capture plate, maybe is what that's called. That's for the door. That's for your screen door there. So that is quite a bit larger than what we are used to seeing. Uh, babe, why don't you go ahead and step in? I'll come in behind you. Stepping into the 2024 trade wind. This is the terracotta color. Now, just like the flying cloud, there are two color options. The only thing that changes between those color options, if you pick terracotta or you pick fieldstone, terracotta is this kind of burnt orange color. Um, if you look at the brochure, you'll see a photo of an ocean or not ocean, a lake. 
and there's like orange um, kind of fall trees in that photo. So yellow, orange, yellows and oranges in it. And I think that was kind of the theme they went for this and as well as the wood laminate that's on the, um, the door fronts here. The, when you pick fieldstone or terracotta, all you're gonna really choose is the color of these cushions. That's it, everything else is gonna be the same. Same floor, same countertop, same laminate on the door front or the cabinet fronts. All that's gonna be the same, just the cushion colors will change. Now, with this being basically a flying clown, the options are pretty much a flying cloud, except for one thing, um, on the flying cloud, solar is gonna be an option as well as lithium batteries. On the trade wind, the solar and battery package is standard. So you don't have to worry about that. But what you can pick is to add the hatch. If you wanna add that, that's currently a $7,500 MSRP add, as well as the convection microwave, which this one has as well. Um, the window awning package is also going to be an add. And then something unique to the trade winds, you can also add a composting um, toilet if you want to go through that nightmare. Um, you can do that. Now, one of the things about the trade wind is this is Airstream's attempt to build the off-roader Airstream. Uh, so you have, you have the off-road tires, which I'll show you once we get to the outside. You're also going to have an actual latch that latches these doors down and holds them shut. So I'm assuming when you do your off-road in your $160,000, $70,000 Airstream, the do these doors won't fly open. Even the doors in the, or drawers in the kitchen are also gonna have a really cool latch that's built into the handle. I love this, it's like I want this on my Flying Cloud, but once that door shuts, it's actually latched in place. And it's not that traditional um, thing that latch or latch thing that they use they've been using forever that it kind of goes into and those things misalign and you got to take the whole drawer out to, to fix it it's all right here it's all accessible and every drawer is going to have that um with the with the trade wind i like it it's really cool i hope to see that in other floor plans now coming to this area here we're going to have our door lockers that we're used to seeing now this is a light Italian plywood with a laminate on it. And depending on you know what model you're getting, you're gonna get a different laminate, but you're always gonna have that light Italian plywood. And you're also gonna get the soft close. There are currently only three models that will have this soft close hinge in it, which is ridiculously oversized. The three models that you get that is gonna be the Flying Cloud, the Trade Wind, and the Classic is where you'll currently see those hinges. Now in this area here, you're gonna find what used to be kind of an entertainment area. We used to have a DVD player in here. They don't have that. We've not had that for a couple of years. We're gonna find a power outlet. Now with it being a trade wind, every single outlet is gonna be on the inverter. So if you got the inverter on, you can use every single outlet where normally you would have plugs labeled inverted. Um, you don't have to worry about, what, worry about that with the trade wind. This is gonna be your HD antenna for your TV. So a little bit easier spot to turn that on and off uh, instead of behind the TV. Um, you've got your HDMI input. This is going to go into a splitter and then go to both TVs and then your cat six input Now this is coming from the outside I'll show you where that is on the outside and it comes to here why the reason they added this the feature and benefit is One if you have internet access, maybe at your house You've got an outside you know, port that you can plug into and you want to get internet into your RV That is a way to do that the probably second and more um the way that most people are going to use it is for Starlink. With Starlink, you can adapt that cable to be a Cat6 or cable end, plug it into the outside, plug that into the dish, or dishy as Starlink likes to call it, and then come inside here, you would grab the other side of that cable, plug it in here, and then plug that into the modem or the um, power supply, uh, and then you have internet on the inside with your Starlink. And then this USB here is plugging into the back of your JL Audio radio. Now it does have the JL Audio radio. I love this radio. We have this on our Flying Cloud. It sounds fantastic. The only thing that I don't like is where the speakers are located, which is going to be underneath here. So if you're sitting in the dinette, they're basically shooting to the top of your head. And then they also shoot to the top of the bed. Uh, so when you're relaxing at night and you're in your bed, they're basically shooting to the top of your head. Now... While we're underneath here, you're going to see the new uh, LED 
thin strip here for your over the dinette light. We also have new reading lights that have one LED in them as well, one on each side. Of course, it's all the GL, JL audio. And then underneath uh, this bench here on this side, you're gonna find a subwoofer for that JL audio system. Now, as far as storage up here, we're gonna have a pull-out drawer again with that same latching hinge that I showed you a second ago. We're also gonna have some storage right there with that traditional latch latching mechanism. And then where Laura is kind of currently at, this area here is actually our all new power system. Now, again, the th next video I'm gonna post about the trade wind, I'm gonna pull these covers off. I'm gonna show you what's behind the curtain. So make sure you're subscribed, uh, you know, hit the bell icon, whatever you wanna do to make sure you see that video when it pops up. Now we'll show you what is behind this door and it is your battery disconnect. Now this is a, they call it auto disconnect. It's not auto, it's just powered. What that means is when you click the power disconnect button that's at the door, it's gonna rotate that. But you do have the ability to walk over and turn this off in the event that something happens and disconnect those batteries. That's right there. And then now for the kitchen area, we'll start on this side here. We'll let Laura swing around. So we'll have a few switches. This is gonna be your awning light and it is dimmed. This is your overhead lights in the kitchen area. That's gonna be your step light right there. And then that is that battery disconnect that I was talking about a second ago. When you press that, it's actually turning or rotating that battery disconnect that I showed you. We're gonna have our first little bit of storage here. Very similar to what you're gonna see on the flying cloud. Um, yeah, pretty much basically the flying cloud. Now, this is a plywood countertop that's laminated with a glued in, uh, strip on the end. And up front of that, we're gonna have a little bit more storage with our large trash can that Laura wishes we had in our camper. And we're gonna have our stainless steel surface mounted sink and a different faucet actually really like this false I kind of think we might have to copy this for the house I just got the thumbs up from Laura on that the funny thing is the flying cloud has the same faucet that we have in our house so we could upgrade to this one and we'll have the same as the trade wind we'll have the sea level monitor system so you can see your know, battery but your fresh water gray water uh, black you also turn your water pump on and off there we've got one of the power sockets here You've got your porthole windows, which is one of my favorite designs that Airstream does. And of course it does have a shade that will come down. And then another light strip, which is an upgrade for 2024, right here, similar to the one over the dinette. Now for the stovetop, it is a Ferion stovetop. You're gonna have three burners up here. Uh, you have a light that can illuminate these uh, valves. You can put this back down so you have some some more storage or surface countertop space there. We're gonna have three pull-out drawers here. Of course, you have your silver organizer that Airstream makes for basically every Airstream they make. These caps here go to cap off the, um, whatever that's called for the table. And then another drawer there. And then usually uh, we'd have like a little small door that folds down here, but that's where your propane detector is. Uh, for the trade winds and then we're going to have just a small little storage area right there the the wheels and tires are going to be behind that oh, that needs to be adjusted there we go and then we're going to have the optional convection microwave now if you choose to not get this convection microwave you're going to have an oven here but you're not going to have a microwave what this is going to give you by choosing this option is a traditional microwave that you're used to using but also a convection oven so you can bake things you can even air fry things with this and with it being the trade wind there's really no reason to get in my opinion the traditional oven because you have a 3000 watt inverter you can microwave uh, straight off the inverter matter of fact we are currently not plugged into anything we're running 100 percent off the of battery power right now and you can see the microwave is actually on now the vent above the stove does vent to the outside which is really nice and of course you have a light to illuminate whatever you're cooking we're gonna find our pantry area right here which we are used to seeing on the flying cloud same pantry area just a new door front now one of the things that laura pointed out in that first video 
that we posted. If you haven't seen that one, go watch that one because you can see Laura's impression of first impression of the trade wind and then her thoughts from the female perspective. But one of the things she pointed out was she really likes the two tone that you get with the trade wind. So you've got this gray door front here with the really nice wood um, laminate behind it. Now, what I get from this is somewhat of a modern vibe, modern handle, not modern laminate wood, and a 70s cushion. So this is uh, Airstream definitely uh, combining a lot of errors into one spot. Now, right beside me, we're going to have the 12 volt smart TV. Uh, the little sticker there is already gone. I'm not sure where it went. I think it's actually in the sink. The 12 volt smart TV. So this is going to run directly off of that 810 amp hour battery pack that's underneath. And then it's also a smart TV that's built in. Under that, it's going to be your Victron energy control. This is connected back to the Victron servo, which is going to give you set of charge on the battery as well as how much wattage is being pulled out or in. Right now we're putting nine watts into the battery and we're using eight watts uh, as far as AC load. The solar panels, which is the yellow one, is currently producing 129 watts off of the solar panels. Now there's 600 watts up there. The way solar works is it's only going to pull down the amount of wattage that it can send. So even if you have the capability of getting 600 watts, you may not see 600 watts there, especially if the battery pack's almost full. Um, it's just not going to be pulling that much in. So right now we're sending eight watts to the inverter, then we're probably sending some or to, into the battery. We're probably sending some to the inverter as well. Um, the There is power actually. So we've got power here. Of course, it's inverted because it is um, connected to the whole house inverter. Then we're going to have the HDMI and coax cable that comes in. And the hardest thing, let me grab the camera for a second. Right back here. Now this switch here that says battery heat. So the batteries underneath have, they're the um, Battleborn GC3 um, game changer batteries. They do have the heater inside of them. So if it's a cold day outside, uh, I'm not sure what temperature it is that they kick on. Um, you're going to want this on. So basically in the winter, you'll want to have that on. The batteries themselves will actually uh, turn the heat on and off depending on whether or not they need to have the heat on and off. So that switch, think about that switch as more so, you're not actually turning the heat on the battery. You're giving the batteries the ability to turn them, their, their heater on themselves. The battery management system, the BMS, and the battery will actually turn them on and off as it needs to be turned on and off. So next thing I'll show you is the refrigerator. It is the Norcole 12 uh, volt all electric fridge. It is eight cubic foot. It's a great size fridge. Also, because it's all electric, there's no fins back in here. So you're going to get the full depth in here. It's a deeper fridge uh, than what your, you know, the propane fridge, what we have on our 2020. Um, I would love to put this in our, our um, Laura's shaking her head up and down. Yes. In our flying cloud. Uh, maybe one day we'll have enough viewers on the channel. We can afford to buy a trade wind. You know, you never know. So. You've got the Norcol 12 volt. You can actually turn this one on and off here. So it's not currently on. I could turn it on and run it straight off the batteries. And if you don't need the refrigerator, you can also have it off. So you're not pulling any energy off of your battery pack. And above that's going to be that storage that of course doesn't have any way to hold it up. So remember if you let it go, ow, it's going to shut. And as we move back, you're going to see the unique curtain of the trade wind. Let's see, and do that under that. And it's a two tone curtain. So, what we're used to seeing from Airstream is just kind of one color. And it's actually maybe the same curtain, just with, um, you know, a different, a little bit different fabric at the bottom. But I really like it. Laura likes it. Again, watch that first video. You get her impression of everything in it. She also wants me to try to figure out how to put this into our Airstream. And Laura, once you go in there and I'll show the wardrobe. Now, first thing I noticed when I, when I came in and just started opening doors, immediately noticed the mirror on the wardrobe door. I love that. And you're getting to see Laura do her camera work. And you have the single wardrobe that we're used to seeing with the 25 foot. Again, this is a 25 foot Airstream. So 
very similar to any other 25 foot that you look at. Um, there is some access here to get into the back side of the shower if you have any issues with the shower. These little fins here are going to, that's where you store the poles that hold the table up when you're not using the table as a table. Um, and then the other one's gonna be your awning arm. Of course, that's got lights in it and then there's storage above. Now, something I didn't mention now just, just made me think about it. In this area here, you're gonna have, oh, wow. Well, this is a breaking news report. There is no pull out to make this into bigger store or bigger sleeping area. So this is your sleeping area. Hmm. It sleeps five. What is our sleep? Six. Yeah. The official brochure said it only sleeps five because you don't have this this one. If you, if you didn't know better, you think Laura was a professional salesperson at Airstream. Uh, so, okay, so it's five would mean they're saying one there and two here. Interesting. Okay. I'm not sure I like that. It doesn't make sense to me. Okay, well, this table will go down. You can put these cushions here will fit in there to make this into a long bed. And then you're going to have uh, just one spot there, no pull out for your fifth person to go right there. And of course the twin beds, you have the two beds up there. So let's go back that way. So we'll go to the bathroom. As I open this door, I want you to notice this different door handle. So I, oh, I need a magnet. This is magnetized. So when you shut the door, it pulls that in. So the door won't open now. And then to, to unlatch the door, you're gonna pull this, but it actually pulls that that's just pulling this back. So it's like a, a magnetic door handle. I'm not even sure how to, how to explain it, but um, it works really well. <laughs> okay. This door ouch, will open all the way around so you can open it to go that way. And then something you can do if you want to, that is you can open this wardrobe door and then pull this to where it sits right there. And then you kind of have a door giving you some privacy for when you're getting ready in the morning. Of course, you can pull the curtain as well. Oh, you didn't want the AC on? I didn't want the noise interfering. Okay. Okay, so in the bathroom, this is the basically the same bathroom for the Flying Cloud. There's plenty of room to use the commode and the facilities. This door goes back and there's a paper towel holder right there. Toilet paper. Yeah, toilet paper. Thanks, thanks babe. Toilet paper holder right there. Uh, we do have some storage underneath right there. Now, you're gonna have the stainless steel surface mounted sink with that same plywood um, countertop instead of the solid surface. We've got the new suburban hot water heater right here. So this is unique that it's tankless, but it has a very complex circulation system in it. And that's what this button right here is gonna control. Again, I'm gonna talk more about this in that third video that I'm gonna post. I'll get into kind of the details of what this is and talk about that. We've got a different, really cool looking uh, faucet in here. We'll have some storage above right there that you know amazingly has hinges that will hold it up. What do you know? And they have some storage there and some really cool ideas that we've seen on Facebook of things you can do to store things up there. And then the other thing I want you to see is the difference in the storage area beside the commode. So a lot of the flying clouds, there's another door that slides at the bottom there. They've got it open on the trade wind. And then we've got the sliding door. Man, that door is sticky. There we go. Above, which is actually fairly shallow compared to what ours looks like. Uh, we'll have a different style hanger, towel hanger here than what we see in the flying cloud. And I think the same um, little towel hook there for the hand towel. That's what goes there, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, let me go into the shower. So this is basically the same shower that we see on the flying cloud. Now, with that recirculation pump, what's happening when the water comes up to this valve, there's a loop. So before it gets to the hot water, or the hot water here, it can loop around and come right back to the uh, hot water heater. So when you have that recirculation pump on and you have the shower off, the hot water is constantly circulating around the camper. 
what this means for you on the trade winds. When you go to get hot water, if you've got that hot the circulation pump on, as soon as you turn hot water on, you're going to basically get hot water. When you turn the hot water off, because you're in an RV and you've got to take a quick shower, you can't use a whole lot of water, especially if you're boondocking, which is the Airstream is the ultimate boondocking camper. Um, you want it to turn off and not get cold. So when you turn it off, it's only going to start getting cold from here to about here. As soon as you turn this back on, you'll have maybe a second of cold water and then it's going to go right back to hot water. That's the benefit of that new Suburban hot water uh, tankless hot water heater with the recirculation pump. I'll go into more detail about that in the next video I post. But plenty of room here. You can easily turn around, take a shower. There's also a seat there if you need it. If you're really tall, I need to sit down. That is not for shaving legs. That's for tall people. I guess you can shave your legs if you need to, but it's for tall people. And if you're wondering, I've just got to look. So we are in the twin bed version of the trade wind. So there'll be the queen bed. The queen bed is the normal queen bed that you see on the 25 foot. It's going to go east to west. There'll be a little bit of room uh, to get around. I'll show up. I'll, I'll pop a photo up of the, tw of the queen bed. Um, there is a little bit of space on this side, but it's not enough space that you can actually get around the bed. Now, in my opinion, in 100% my opinion, on the 25 foot and the 23 foot, I feel like it twin bed is a must. That's what you've got to get is the twin bed. On the 27 foot and the 28 foot and the 30 foot, the queen bed can make sense because there's enough room that the queen bed can go north south and you can get around that bed to be able to get in and out of it. Now, you'll lose a wardrobe. When you go to the queen bed uh, on the 27 foot, on the 25 foot, you keep a wardrobe here. You actually lose drawers um, when you go to the twin bed. I really like the twin bed because it makes this feel like a whole nother room. I can actually come in here and get ready. Uh, our dog sleeps right there at night. And then she tries to jump on the bed at some point in the middle of the night. Now, as far as the beds go, they're 34 inches deep. They're going to be 80 inches long. Now, the mattress is supposed to be a new four layer mattress. I cannot tell you if this is better than ours yet, because when I lay down on ours for the first time, it felt great. After sleeping on it for four hours, it was flat. So I'm hoping this one will be better. It feels a little bit more supportive than ours, our 2020. I want Laura to lay down on it and see what she thinks. We do have speakers up here. We have the reading lights as well, the new LED lights right there speakers are right there pointing straight down at your face when you're laying down at night you know and then in the middle we'll have the really nice nightstand we're going to have power right there we'll have usbs on both sides and then of course you have the pull out i really like this drawer here um when we're camping i feel like it is just the perfect spot for a lot of stuff like just things that you need, but you don't need to be out. They go right there. Perfect. Um, remember, this window will open. That window will open. And this window here that says exit, it will also open. It won't fall out. Um, it's just the emergency exit because you can pull this and that will come up and the screen will go, will go out. Now we have a 24-inch TV right here that's also 12-volt and a smart TV. You're going to have your GE air conditioner control right there. So... AC, 15,000 BTU AC, and it has a heat pump. The GE also from the factory, from Airstream, has the soft start in it as well for the boondocking system. And we'll have some more power right there. And then, of course, your HDMI and your coax cable that goes in, 12-volt leads, and then your light switch for the bedroom area. Now, in the bedroom, we're also going to have some storage underneath right there, and then storage on this side with uh, containers that come out so containers on this side no containers on that side now as far as storage goes you're basically on the twin bed you're dividing up your inside storage so half of this is inside half of it or a portion of it is going to be outside whereas the queen bed the whole inside of the queen bed is inside storage and then you have a smaller outside storage area now, while we're in here, let's figure out what is in these massive boxes. Because usually, we just have one box. So, this looks like 
fancy pillows. Oh. Ooh, I like those. So these would be your decorative pillows. I like how you said, ooh, as if we ever use decorative pillows. I still like them. <laughs> they look really I nice. like the idea of them. I like them too. And let's see what's in this one. Uh, oh, this is the comforters. Oh, I like this. These are nice. So there's your comforters. Let's see if we can get a good shot of that. See that blue? Yeah. It's a really nice dark blue, deep, like a deep blue. It complements the terracotta really nicely. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. So that's your, your two comforters. These are heavy. And this is the same comforter that comes in the fieldstone and the terracotta. Yes, same color. Yep. And then this is your just your kind of airstream goodie box. I'll show you what's in here while we're here. Uh, so in here we're gonna find our two remotes for the two TVs, which as I mentioned earlier, they are smart TVs, so you have things like Netflix and Prime Video on there. This is just your probably user manual for the TVs, what it looks like. You're gonna have your monitor for your uh, standard backup camera. So this is going to go into your tow vehicle. Uh, it's wirelessly connects to the the um, TV back or this camera back there, but you're gonna plug into a 12 volt. Now your truck may not have one of these 12 volts, but you can find on Amazon an adapter that will take it from USB and then give you a um, cigarette lighter style input. That's just the bracket that holds the TV up. The TV, wow. Whew, it's a long day. Holds the monitor up. And then the monitor. Is right there. Really nice widescreen monitor. You can really see well. And again, it's wireless. It connects back. This is going to be the Y-Sight 2.0. Uh, it is newer. If you have an older camper, this will not work with the camera that's on it. Uh, but it will work on, of course, the newer ones. There's some inputs there. But that is the monitor that goes with the backup camera. Stick this back in here. It was there. Okay. And then we have kind of a cool, um, I don't know what they call these, four lug wrench, folding four lug wrench. That's Airstream branded. It's kind of cool. There's the Airstream on it right there. You can see that. And then this is going to be your quick disconnect hose for that the LP quick disconnect that's outside, which we haven't seen that yet because we started on the inside. And I'll show that to you in a second. Stay tuned. And then this is the override, the manual override for the power tone jack if the power tone jack stops working. And then we're just going to have a really nice Airstream rug. So that's what comes in the goodie box as well as a little tester for your GFCI outlets. That's pretty much it. That was really fun, wasn't it? Okay. I like that the box actually says Airstream goodie box. Does it? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Like, huh. I've never noticed that. And as a serial number, so they know which one it goes to. Put that back there, and then I didn't. Have we shared the wardrobe. Nope. So wardrobe, which I call this, that his closet. Pretty much my stuff goes in here. I get this area, and I get this comp this uh, storage locker. Half of it. Half of it. Yeah, that's right. Like <laughs> here over, and then Lori gets everything else. So, which is probably a good part of the course, right? So you got that one, and this one, and again, these will have the soft close, and has the lock, locking latch, as well, which I really like. I really like that. Okay, so I think we've got everything up here. Do you want to mention no locker over here? Oh yeah, so big thing with the, the trade wind is there's no locker here where the 25 foot flying cloud, there's a locker. It's smaller than, you know, it's not this big, it's smaller. But Laura fills that thing up. So that's gonna be a big thing to kind of think about because you don't have that storage and you're losing the storage up front under the sofa area because it has all the components under there. Um, let's see. We talked about the soft start. You do have a filter here that's built into this. This is the, the new 
um, intake that Airstream is using on those 2024s. Uh, power box. So a little bit different power box. There's not a converter built into this, but you've got all your power, your breakers there, and then your fuses here. Okay, let's um, let's go to the outside. We're gonna do the outside now. All right, we're on the outside now of the trade wind. Now the first thing I noticed when I walked up is really how high this thing is sitting, which we're kind of going right into the sun on the camera. Um, so you, you have a three inch lift kit from the factory. It is the Dexter axle lift kit. So it's the same style lift kit that we do here at the store. Now the difference is that you have a 16 inch tire instead of a 15 inch tire. So you're really more like a four inch lift versus the three inch lift. So, and, and it may be even taller with it, the, with the, the tires that are on it. Cause you have a, you have a good year off road tire. So it may even be in taller, taller than four inches, but it's at least four inches of, of height extra on this for the off-road capability. Now it is a Dexter axle, so it's fully independent suspension. It's also gonna have the damper on it. And we'll get a better look at that here in a second, but I just wanted you to kind of see the height. The first thing I noticed when I came up to the trade winds for the first time was how high, how high this is sitting off the ground. Now, as you're looking under, you'll see that manual stabilizer. Up here at the front, we're gonna have the standard stainless steel rock guard. The reason Airstream puts this here, this is one, it's stronger than aluminum because it's stainless steel. Now, if you get a couple of rocks in there, it's not, you know, it's not gonna rust, it's stainless steel. And if it gets dented bad enough over time that you wanna replace it to give it a new look, that's easy to do because it's just a piano hinge on this side. We can easily replace this where we cannot easily replace the aluminum that's behind it. We're also gonna have the solar guards this is going to be a polymer, so essentially plastic, but it is a very strong plastic. This is, again, kind of a sacrificial piece here. If you get a rock chip in this, it's much easier for us to replace this than it is to replace this custom window that is butt riveted in place. So that's going to be a true glass window there. These windows are going to be hand built by Airstream Artisans in Jackson Center, Ohio. And it's really cool to watch them if you ever get to do the factory tour. Laura and I have done the factory tour together. Uh, they'll run these things through the machine, they weld them together, and then there's someone right beside them that's immediately checking to make sure that it's within the spec that it needs to be um, for the window. Same thing with your curved windows. It's really cool to watch them install those curved windows. It takes two guys to do it. Um, now, in this uh, container here, you're gonna have two 30 amp, 30 amp, geez, 30 pound propane tanks it does have the auto switch over. I personally prefer to have this pointing towards the tank and I'll turn that tank on. So that way, when this, this uh, tank runs out, I know it's out and I can come open this one up, switch it over here. And I know, I know I need to get that tank filled up. But you got two 30 pounds, so a total of 60 pounds of propane, which, you know, you have the convection oven on this one. You're really using the propane for the hot water heater, the furnace and the stove top is pretty much all you're gonna use that for. Now behind this, where you would normally have your battery box, you have an empty box. And that's not because this didn't come with batteries. It did come with batteries. It has 810 amp hours of batteries. Uh, the batteries are moved to the back and I'll show you where they're located here in a little bit. But you're gonna have um, a little bit of extra storage here. Now it is, it's the same box. This is exactly the same box the Airstream uses when they put the battery box here. So you have all the same holes that we'd have, even the little inserts here are there as well. So interesting, um, I'm kind of interested that they did it that way instead of just doing a fully closed box, but you can still use it, it's just gonna be wet soil. And then behind that, or above that, you're gonna have your larger of your three outside storage areas. Now this is a spot that people used to add batteries uh, to give them you know, the capacity that this has, but this is gonna have plenty of battery. You also have a light in there that Laura just showed you and then it's going to come all the way over great storage area just that the only downside to this storage area is that it's right behind the propane tanks so it can be a little bit hard to get in there when you need to load things in and out you'll have a 3500 pound power tongue jack as well as a little light so you can see at night and there is a level up here that is not very useful i'd highly recommend getting the level make pro but under this cap you're going to have the um top of the screw whatever bolt thing that goes down 
so you can manually raise this up and down if the motor goes bad you got the Demco hitching system, which is fantastic. I love this system. You can basically lower it down onto the ball and it will kind of open up, let the ball come into it and then close right back down. And then you've got your safety chains, all that kind of stuff, seven pin connector. Right here, you're gonna have your Zamp. Well, actually it's not Zamp anymore, but that's your extra solar input right there. You can see there. And um, you can do like a suitcase solar panel just needs to have a solar charge control on, on it because that's going to connect all the way back to those batteries um, directly. And then we're going to have our propane quick disconnect right here for cook, you know, cooking up things like your grills, those types of things. Now, as we come around to the front, one of the other things that I want to quickly point out is this different um, belt line here. So on a regular flying clown and pretty much everything else, this is going to be a chrome piece here, which does fade every time. I really like this kind of light gray look. Now it almost matches the Tradewinds logo here. Uh, I think it looks really good. I also think that it's going to look good longer. That's my hope. And then down here, you've got your main connection for the sidewall and the floor is also going to have this here. If you're wondering why this is here, behind this strip here is all of your rivets that run all the way down to connect all that together. Same thing here, it's all rivets running all the way down to connect these two sheets together. And then you got your Suburban hot water heater outlet here. Uh, that's gonna be, as I talked about on the inside, the um, tankless. It actually does have a little one gallon tank in it just for the circulation pump when you're using the circulation. Outside of that, it's instant water, hot water. And then that's just the outlet. Now this thing will put out a lot of heat. So you don't wanna put anything in front of that that could potentially melt because when it's on, it's gonna put some heat out. And then right here, we're gonna have our outside power. Uh, again, since this is a whole house inverted RV, when you have the inverter on as it is right now, um, that is power, which is really cool. Now we're at the wheels and tires, so we're gonna have the Goodyear Wranglers. These things look so cool on, the, on this Airstream. A new set of wheels for the Tradewind as well. It's going to be the LT225 75R16, so 16 standing for the diameter of the rim, so it's going to be a 16 inch tire. You can see right in here the damper for the Dexter axle that we're going to have. And the benefit there is it helps to settle the, uh, the wheels, the bounce down quicker than just the torsion system on its own. Now I'm going to have Laura kind of look underneath the, coat, the, the Airstream here, and you're going to see in the middle the dexter axle going all the way across that bend there in the middle that's normal so what that's doing they bend that to set the camber of these tires so that would be this way right that way so they get these straight up and down they do a little bit of a bend there at the factory with dexter inside of that is very thick rubber and there's a axle going through the middle of it and the axle's square and then the rubber's around it and it's going to rotate up and down against that rubber and that's your torsion system and then you've got the damper there now this gray box here is going to be either your gray tank or your black tank the one forward is going to be either gray tank or black tank and then the one that's in between the two axles that's going to be your fresh water tank right there very nice good camera work <clears throat> okay moving forward we've got the step I have never had a camera person to be able to film me doing the steps. So I'm very excited about this. To put this step away, we're gonna fold these in and then lift this step up. And then what we wanna do is rotate it around so that it sets down just like that. Now we can use a step like this if we want to, um, or you can bring it back down and have the two. Now to put it away, it's kind of one motion. We're gonna pull back. Once we pull back, this will unlatch. We're gonna push forward and then up. So forward, up. So out, forward, and then up. And it latches right in place. When you wanna release it or deploy it, you just pick those up, let it come out, make sure it latches on both sides. There's springs on the, each side uh, to pull this down. And then what we'll do with the step is we wanna make sure that we rotate and then push up and around. What can happen is it will fold out that way and then you've got that thing going on. So to fix that, you're gonna bring it up, get it back into place, then bring it back around, and then you've got your step in place and you're ready to go. Very easy to do, but takes a little bit of time to figure it out. So the next thing we're gonna do 
is the Oni. So with it being basically a flying cloud, manual Oni, which I actually like, it's a lot higher. <laughs> All right. So you unloosen this part. Come on. Turn that over. And we'll go over on this side. This is this side's much easier. Bring that down. Bring that door. And do the other travel lock. And we can grab it right here in the middle. And bring it down. Also gives us an opportunity to see what fabric looks like. Yeah, so, oh, this is nice. Kind of light, almost stone look. I would say stop but it's, it's it's a very light color what I'm used to seeing so from here you want to stay underneath the awning this is key so I'm going to grab the fabric right here and I'm just going to walk myself down and then I can put a hand here I like to use my left hand in this position because then I can grab with my right hand the support arm and put it in place now think of this as home so when you're putting it away we're gonna grab this and take it to home and put it right there. And we're hooking up, we're going right there. Now from here, you're gonna grab right around where this acorn nut is. And be okay with putting a little bit of force on it. You're not gonna break it. So you're gonna latch it in place, just like that. So what's happening is this um, latch here is sliding down and going into a hole, okay? And then we can walk over to the other side Do the same thing so i'm gonna put my this time my right hand here and i'll bring up that in place and then grab right there and latch into place now if you don't feel like you've got the mass to do that i'm a little bit bigger so i've got plenty of up but if you don't have that you can come around and grab it like this and then pull it to get it in place now i've got both sides latched in place so I'm going to pull out this little, I need to figure out what these things are called, whatever this is, and go up two. So you can see the cutouts right here. So that's where this pin is going into, same thing as up there. So there's going to be another one of these down, but I don't like to go all the way to the highest one until I open the other side. So I'm going to go over and open that side. Right here. And another thing I want to point out. So put your your arm, your hand that's pointing that way, just under it. So don't try to open it here. Don't do that. That's going to be really difficult. What you're going to do is put a hand right here. I'm going to pull this out. And then now I can just stand up like that. This sucker's tall. So I will say the difference I'm noticing with this lift kit is reaching that is a little bit, a little bit harder. <laughs> I can't get that. <laughs> I need a stool. All right. Well, that's as high as I can go without a stool, which is actually pretty high because it's already high. Now, you can tilt it to one side if you want to do that. Bring it down and tilt it a little bit so the sun is on this side. You can tilt it that way if you want to. And of course, you can go up to there. Now, to put it away, the, the trick here is you want to use the fr friction between this inner rod and this outer rod to control how fast it goes down. So what I'm gonna do, see if you can see this, I'm gonna lift up a little bit. So I'm just lifting up and creating a tension there, binding, and I can pull this out and I can just lower it down just a little bit and let it slide in place. So it's gonna slide down to that one and I can bring it all down to the last one, just like that, so that easy. And then from here, we're gonna pull, I'm gonna hold this again with my left hand, pop that out, Bring this down. Now it's in home and we'll walk back to the other side. And then same thing, I'm gonna lift this up a little bit. And just let it come down. 
come all the way down to the last one just like that and see how easy that is and then now when i release this the awning is going to want to go up so i'm going to hold it down with my right hand and release it now i'm going to show you the caravan awning setup so i've unlatched that so i'm just going to let these go all the way back until they stop so this is what they call the caravan setup it lets you have your awning out but it's closer to the rv so you can put your next airstream right here for your uh, rally. What's the thing in the circle they call it? Wagon wheel. So if you're doing a wagon wheel, you're like, how are we gonna get that beanie in there? I want my own in That's how you do it. Now to put it away, you're gonna come back down, holding it with your right hand, pull this away, and then we're gonna pull it up. So we're going up, then we can bring it back down to home. And then from here, we're gonna go back to the middle, grab my awning arm and then we start letting it pull itself right back up into place and you're good now when you're camping you do not need to put the travel locks on just grab this one right here latch it in place the awning's not going anywhere the wind's not going to pull it out you're fine, but before you pack up to go home, one of the things you wanna have on your checklist is to make sure the travel locks are back in place. All right, let's continue around to the back. So we're coming around to the back again. This one has the optional hatch. I'll open that real quick. Really cool hatch. Um, it's a $7,500 MSRP ad if you decide to add it to your trade win. Uh, the models you can get this on right now is the trade win. The 25 and 27 Flying Cloud and the 25 and 27 International. So that will go up. So it's a really nice way to get the inside, inside, or outside, inside, and then without the bugs. And that locks like that, goes like that. We're gonna have a little bit of wet storage in here. I like to put my kind of sewer hose and some water hose, uh, leveling blocks, is kind of things I put in here. I really like this added mat here. You get this when you have the hatch, otherwise you don't get it. But it's just really nice. I'd love to see them do that on um, well, every model. Now all of your marker lights on the Airstream are gonna be LED. You're also gonna have the standard backup camera that I showed you the, in, the monitor on the inside. Again, that's wireless, so it has that antenna sticking up up there. And then, um, yeah, that's about it for the back. Oh, you do have the, the window awning package on this one now. I can usually reach that without much problem. But that, that lift kit, you're definitely seeing that. So on the window awning on this side, you're gonna bring this up and around and let it connect in like that. And if you saw, if you're able to see that. So bring it in and out like that. And then to put it away, we'll just let it come around. I like it to go behind the acorn like that. And then it goes up. Now all of the awnings that you get with the airship is gonna have that aluminum protection up there. Yeah, moving around to the business side of the man, those 16 inch wheels look sharp. They really do. I want those on our keeper. Okay, so you're gonna have your furnace here. You'll have your 30 amp smart plug right there. Very easy to plug in and unplug. Uh, you have 30% more metal to metal contact with this plug. It's part of what makes it special. Underneath of that, you're gonna have your coaxial input for. A campsite tv or a satellite and then your cat 6 input which you can use for starlink is right there and i showed you where that went on the inside we're gonna have which is unique to the trade wind trade wind is another outside power on this side of the coach i really like that they've done that i'd like to see that on more floor plans the airstream produces we'll have the city inlet here with the pressure regulator built in so you don't need to use one we got the black tank flush. Remember to use this every time you go camping because if you don't use it, you lose it. We're gonna have beside that, the first door will be the gravity fed fresh water fill. And there is an overflow valve right there. If you can see it, that will flow out once it's full. So you can fill it all the way up. And then the next door over is gonna be our outside shower. Right there so you have your standard outside shower that we see pretty much on every airstream now one thing i do like about this floor plan right under the shower is going to be your sewer connections 
so you can easily watch things all you also have a really nice little light right there uh, to be able to see things at night if you're dumping or something of that nature black tank and gray tank remember always pull your black first and then your gray and clean everything out and black tank is the front one gray tank is the back one i was kind of wondering which ones those were and we'll have our last storage compartment right there and if you're wondering what your cargo capacity is on this particular camper it's 780 pounds that is your cargo compare carry capacity so you are sacrificing a good bit of weight to add all those batteries and all that extra stuff in there you've got your gross vehicle weight right there 7300 pounds i love how they put the cargo weight weight right there okay before we finish the outside um i'm going to show you where the batteries are and then we're going to show you the top so you can see all of that solar panels that are up there so the batteries are going to be underneath right here so there's another metal compartment right there inside of there is three battleborn gc3 um, batteries that total 810 amp hours of battery power so that's where that's stored at now one thing i noticed it was a question i had in seeing the trade winds for the first time it is that that's held on by screws uh, really large screws not rivets which is something i like because that means it should be easier to drop this and see what's in there oh. okay so we're going to cut the camera off for a second i'm going to grab a ladder and we're going to look at the top of this airstream all right folks we're on top well we're not on top i'm standing on that ladder but here is the top of the trade wind now that port right there i bet is where air connect goes if you decide to get that system it is going to be the new ge profile air conditioner that was new for 2024 we're also seeing that on the flying cloud in the international and then one kind of main thing to point out with the trade wind is this is not the rigid marlin solar panel these are flex panels like we see uh, on the base camp but there are six of them up here there's also two combiners right there. So two, the two combiners each can take three solar panels going into it. Um, so you'll have three going into one and three going into the other one. I'm not sure you know, which ones are which. The kind of round dish thing right there is your HDTV. That's going to be your vent for the bathroom. There's another one just like that on the other side that's for the shower. And then that guy right there in the middle, that's just your vent for your sewer system. Now let me move up to the front so I can show you that front area. Okay, so I just moved to the back of the trade wind. So I'm gonna give you, so that's your max air vent there. You can't put a cover on that. Your uh, sun, sun, what would that be called? Sun, not visor, sun. I don't know, the thing that lets the sun in. You guys, sun what? Sunroof. Sunroof? Yeah. Moon roof? I don't know. I don't know. So I forget son, I forget what they call things. You get, get making a video, your brain stops working sometimes. You can see the two combiners right there in the middle. And you've got your two, I mean, two solar panels kind of going east to west. You're going to have one right here, and then there's one on the other side. And then there's the two in the middle. And you can see the cables that go around, that connect around. Now, the roof is, it is an aluminum roof. It is, the reason it's white is it has a baked on enamel coating. Uh, to help shield a lot of solar energy and then right here is going to be that one connection uh, to connect the end cap to the roof now the old roofs used to have a raise here so there's actually two connections right there It'd be one and then it would kind of go down a little bit and be the other one this is new for 2024 there's a new front cap and rear cap design that also means i didn't mention this earlier there is new structure in that front cap to prevent front end separation that is what the factory has told me um, when I asked them about that and specifically with the 25 foot. That was part of the new front ends was to increase that, um, well, redesign that. So that is the top of the trade wind. You guys tell me what you think. Skylight. That's what that's called. Skylight. Thanks, babe. That's why I brought you here. I had to Google it. There's Laura. There she is. There's Laura. Okay, we're going to finish this video up. I hope you enjoyed this uh, rather in-depth video of the trade winds, 
Give Laura a thanks in the comments for videoing it for us. Uh, if you have any questions about the Tradewind or any Airstream for that matter, uh, feel free to reach out. All of my contact information is below in the description. Um, as well as anything else that I need to put down there. I uh, hope you guys are having a good day. You live riveted and we'll talk soon. Thanks. Bye.